This time on back shed, the HQ is back and she's got a fresh motor and we went for our first rego check. She failed, but only just. Take a look. So if you haven't seen the previous episode with the HQ in it, I'll give you a quick look around it, bring you up to speed. So she's mostly original paint from the back doors forward. We sanded on that a little bit, clear coated it. Got signs of an old couple of repairs in the back end here. We stripped out the interior, cleaned out all the rat turds, put some seat covers on the seats to hold them together, cleaned up the door cards, added some wheels. And we got the old 202 running, but she's smoking hard. So in this episode, we're pulling the old 202 out. We've got a fresh red motor for her. Let's get into it. So the wind's picked up outside, so I've just brought him inside because it was starting to destroy my masking. But I thought it's probably a good opportunity to show you exactly what's going on. So yesterday afternoon, I started pulling apart. I had no intention of pulling the motor out, but if you blinked in the time-lapse, you would have missed the motor coming out because it's literally big engine bay, small motor, took 20 minutes and we had it ready to lift and went, hey, may as well lift it out. That was late yesterday afternoon. so. We're now ready to put some colour on this. We're just using a semi-gloss black. So there is no reason we can't have the motor going back in this afternoon. I haven't removed anything that doesn't need to come out, but by the same token, I'm not painting over things like wiring. What we're gonna do is suspend it using a wire. We've unclipped it. We're just gonna suspend it up to the hinge. It's very fast drying this black. Suspend it up to the hinge, paint underneath it. Once you're finished, drop it back down, clip it up. We'll put some black on the gearbox, the starter. Um, should be able to have this thing going back in this afternoon. So engine base painted, we'll line up the clutch, get the old three speed on, the old three on the tree. How old school is that? If you don't know what I mean by three on the tree, let me explain. We think of this as the tree and that as a branch. It is first, second, third. So one, two, three. And reverses toward you and up. Three on the tree. So why I say when you're lining the clutch up, if you see, that's the clutch plate there and it has splines on it. That is the input shaft of the gearbox, it has splines on it. Those splines engage to the clutch plate and there's also this section of the input shaft that sits into the back of the crankshaft. So it goes into that hole for support. So why I say you've got to line it up 
you've got to have the clutch plate at the correct spot to go in through the spline and into the back of the crank however when you're putting it back together if you see if you see that's the clutch plate there it can move around so the way to do it if you don't have the correct tool the correct tool is a copy of this input shaft with a handle on it so you can insert it tighten the clutch down and then you can fit the box up if you don't have that tool the way to do it do these guys up finger tight don't tighten them down and make sure you can still move that clutch plate then line it up by eye making sure the edge of the clutch plate and the edge of the pressure plate line up and looking in here to make it look central but make sure you can still move the clutch plate the theory of doing it that way is when the input shaft goes in it can actually move the clutch plate engage into the back of the crank and then when it's back in the car through this section here where the dust cover goes you then do the clutch bolts up from underneath the car write yourself a little note not to forget So all in all, pretty good day. If you blinked, you would have missed the motor coming out in the time lapse because these are pretty simple to pull out and came out pretty quick. The 202 obviously was smoking its head off. As far as I can tell, the 202 that we pulled out of this is the original motor. So I did want to get it rebuilt and put back in or at worst case, re-ring and bearing it. But after talking to a machine shop, they were talking a three to four month wait just to get it machined. I don't do weight very well. So I found this little fella on Marketplace. Um, he, apparently he was rebuilt and found itself with very limited hours in the corner of a shed. Not sure the whole story. So the idea was zip up and get it, 202 out, this one in, get back on the road. So that's been two days. Out yesterday, paint the engine bay, back in today. And we're almost there. I'm just waiting on an exhaust flange because I'm keeping the stock manifold. That was one of the reasons I went back with a 6 and also the reason that the stock 202 will go with the car if we sell it or I'll get it machined and then put it back in later. This thing is stock. The paint is, is the factory paint except for the rear as you saw at the start. It's unmodified. The factory dash is not cut up. Even the original drums, which that would probably be the first thing you change to a set of discs if you were going to modify it. I didn't want to modify this one, I just want to keep it as a patina type of cruiser because we've still got mucus. Mucus is getting a big block. He's had a few modifications, got a hole in the floor. It was a V8 car, so it's already got discs. So that's the one I'm going to modify. So well, I'm not really a stock car type of person, but I'll get my fix on mucus. 50 odd years without being modified. Sometimes you just got to leave them alone. So in the morning, if my exhaust flange turns up, we are doing an exhaust, front end bushes, and then just going around doing bulbs and things, indicators, that sort of stuff. It's beer time, see you in the morning. So these are the bushes we're getting out here. When you're undoing these two, and this will all come off as one piece, wire wheel these threads first to clean them up so the nut comes off and doesn't take all that paint and everything with it. 
when you're taking these shims out just take note of what came out of where and put them back don't get me wrong you're still going to need a wheel alignment but if you put them back where they are you got half a chance of being a decent setup to get it to the wheel alignment shop righto stop talking get into it So this is what we're replacing. These are the bushes. That's the old bush, it's compressed as hell. That's the new bush. They're both out. You'll see in the time lapse, I get the die grinder out. What I'm doing there is to get the bush out, you're getting something like this and you're just getting it on the edge of the bush like that. And you're pounding it ass out of it. What it actually does, it bends over the edge of the metal. So as you're about to get it out, so this one's just about to come out, run a file or a die grinder just around the edge there take the burr off because otherwise that's going to be the hardest bit to get out all right so we've wire wheeled the upper control arms and we're at the point where we want to push our new bushes in to get them in these are what's called an interference fit these need to be pressed in to those holes if you don't have a press here's the way i do it get them nice and hot because as you know metal expands when it's hot and contracts when it's cold so with these guys Chuck them in the freezer. And they'll contract nicely. Now, while they're chilling in the freezer, I'll tell you a little bit more about this motor. The HQ's come out with two six cylinders, a 173 and a 202. If you had a keen eye in the time lapse, you would have seen that this is actually 186. It popped up on Marketplace, it said it was rebuilt, and I've found no evidence to suggest otherwise. And it's only going to be a gap stop. The original 202 will do something with it, it'll go with the car. So I really didn't care about capacity whatsoever. All the red motors are the same dimension, so everything's interchangeable and everything fitted. And so I chose running and driving right now, rather than sitting in the corner and waiting for that 202 to get bored or whatever. Now. We might have got away with rings and bearings, uh, but the chances of pulling it down and finding that was slim. This was going to be the quick way to do it. Get it on the road, get it driving. All right, we'll see how cold these bushes are. We're just going to take two, we'll get two done. We'll get two pressed in, and then we'll do the other two on the other side. So there's the control arm, there's the bushes. To give you an idea, it's 56 degrees. 16.4 Now I found it hard to film and have both hands on that so I've done it anyway I should have another bigger socket over the top of this rubber so I'm not squeezing it but I don't have one and that's a big socket there so if I undo it you can see I've used the socket to hold the back of the control arm and push the bush into the socket. Don't use too small a socket and get that stuck either. So get it started into the into the um, control arm. Make sure it's square. And yep, that control arm's still friggin' hot. Just careful we don't rip your rubber. And you'll see him pushing in. And that's going into the socket.
So back out into the sun because you want to get them as hot as possible and even that short period of time they drop temp. This guy's got to go in next. Don't go and push that bush in because you can't get it in. It's got to come in now. You have to put it in now and push that bush in. So this makes it a little bit trickier. Don't laugh, I've seen it done. Bush pushed in then went, oops, take it all back out. All right, back for the other two. And so shaft goes into that bush, bush sits on the top, get your socket again over the top of that rubber, like that, and then just tap him. And it taps in and seats there. But put that rod in first. So the engine bay's come up really neat. All the blacks redone, new master, fresh motor. Painted a few little bits and pieces while I was out, like the air cleaner. I think if we were going to go the next step with this one, I'd paint all the white and under the bonnet. Still leave it ratty on the outside, but so when you lift the bonnet, it's basically nice and neat. I won't say restored, but just really tidy. All right, let's flip around, check some lights, finish off the rest of that exhaust. Stop talking, get into it. So at that point, the smoky motor's addressed, we've got an exhaust on it, we've got some upper control arm bushes done, I've gone through the lights, it's time to hit the highway and head up for an inspection for Rego. So we've now done a fair bit of work on this old girl and it was good to get her out on the highway. It was only about 40 k's or so but the smile didn't leave my face the whole time. Yeah she did fail but really minor stuff. I got a couple of suspect ball joints and they do want me to do a little bit of rust work which was to be expected. And that'll be the next time you see the HQ will address those issues. But in the meantime, the next few episodes we've got the Statesman back and we're starting on Mucus's Big Block. Thanks for watching.